What is your hope, General? Close the door, Captain. All right, Gallagher, why did you abort this time? I did not abort. Sir, we had a problem. A problem, all right, fine, Gallagher. I'll listen to your problem only. Make it a new one. Engine running rough or a proper running wear or a generator whine, those are not new problems, Gallagher. I've been given a great number of those, and I might add a considerable number from you. This invest is full of engine malfunctions that run up at takeoff and at high altitude, in spite of which most of the men on this group still manage to fly, but not you. Why, Gallagher? My number one engine, sir, was not running up the way I'd like. What you'd like does not matter. On this base, every man goes to war every day, and that includes you. From now on, particularly you. Do you understand me, Captain? Yes, sir. Then get out of here. <laughs> Clock High. A QM production. Starring Robert Lanson. Also starring John Larkin. And Frank Overton. With guest star Paul Burke. Tonight's episode, Golden Boy Had Nine Black Sheep. Mr. Gallagher, how'd it go, buddy? Those lousy engines, how do you think it went? No, I mean with the general. That's my business. Now, look, buddy, I've had a few innings with him myself. I thought we might compare notes. Hey, Gallagher, you know what he called me? He called me number one combat delinquent. Number one combat. Hey, what little term of endearment did he give you, Gallagher? Yellow-breasted bird watcher? Knock it off. Knock it off, Blake. Come on, let's have beers all around. Beers all around, yeah? All around. Captain Gallagher? Oh, I thought that was you. How are you, son? All right, I suppose, sir. Can I give you a lift? No, thank you, sir. Oh, uh, is General Savage in that club by any chance? Uh, he's in his office. I, um, I just left him. Something wrong, Captain? Sir, what could be wrong with a man like General Savage running the base? Well, it's been very good seeing you, General Crow. Sir?
right? So? How's business? Still managed to keep the store open seven days a week. Well, you're due for a little overtime. <laughs> oh, I thought you'd just drop by for a little social call, Wiley. Have some coffee? Oh, no, thank you. I have tasted Eddie's coffee. Mm. <sighs> well, sir? It's a two aircraft deal, Frank. It's a rough operation in southern France. I don't know the location of the mission as yet. I don't know when it's due to be pulled off. You're to have two top crews selected and ready to take off at a moment's notice. It's high command stuff, Frank. They seem to think a good deal depends on it. We'll be ready. I saw Joe Gallagher on the way in. My goodness, I've known him since he was about that high. His father and I served together on many posts. The nice kid. Kids we don't need, Wiley. Why didn't you endorse Gallagher's promotion papers? Because I don't believe he deserves a promotion. Well, Gallagher's father, I uh, shouldn't have to remind you, is a two-star staff man back in the Pentagon. Wiley, when Captain Gallagher cuts it, he'll get his majority, not one minute before that. Well, that's one of the more interesting facets of your personality, Frank. Nobody ever has a mere meeting with you. It always has to be a collision. <laughs> How many aircraft are you putting up tomorrow? Eighteen, sir. Well, good luck. Oh, thank you. We've had rougher missions, General. We'll be all right. Uh, about Gallagher. You're not tackling just another captain. You're attacking a whole military tradition. About four generations of it, in fact. Well, I don't... I'd keep my guard up if I were you, Frank. You'll have to come out of this with a bloody nose. <laughs> Captain Gallagher. General Crow was talking about you yesterday. He seems interested in your career. Well, that's nice of the general to tell me. Now, I'm not being nice, Gallagher. I'm telling you for a reason. It isn't every captain who has a wing commander personally interested in him. I thought that fact might make you want to come up with a better showing. I do the best I can with the equipment I'm given, sir. That's where we disagree, Gallagher. I don't believe you do your best. Which is why I refuse to sign your promotion to Major. Well, we do have that in common, don't we, General? What? I'm referring to the rank problem. Here I am, a Major without portfolio, and you're a General doing a Colonel's job. That is right, isn't it, sir? A group is usually run by a Colonel? That is right, Captain. Just like the next Major I get takes on a squadron. And I'm not sure you're man enough for that job. Now, you get that plane of yours up in the air today, and you keep it there. All right, let's go. jamming across the band, sir. I can't receive wing command. All right, then we'll go in without the green light. Red Fox Charlie 1 to Red Fox Charlies. Let's keep a tighter formation today. After yesterday, the fighters will be out in force. Pilot to radio. Have you heard from wing command yet? Negative. Reception still fouled up, sir. All right, keep trying, Cliff. Red Fox Charlie 1 to Red Fox Charlies. Now, let's maintain radio silence from now on. Don't advertise. They'll find us soon enough. Radio to pilot. Captain, we just got a recall from Wing. Doesn't he turn around? He got the recall. Powers not to reason why. Powers but to do or die. Powers not to reason why. At this time, Crandall. Not 
this time. Our two and three is running too hot. Yeah. They are. <laughs> Charlie 10, pulling out of formation, sir. to serve by wing command. All right, so we get that straight. My B-channel fouled out. I didn't hear about that recall until we got back to base. And that explains why the general countermanded a superior's order. That doesn't explain your actions, Captain. You take your orders from me, not from wing. Sixteen other pilots also heard that order, and they stayed with the group, but not you. Why? Because two of my engines were running hot. They could have caught on fire at any moment. And since we were on recall anyway, I felt I was not justified to needlessly jeopardize the lives of my crew. You're the son of Major General Max Gallagher, aren't you, Captain? Yes, sir. And you are also a graduate of the United States Military Academy with three years active service. Yes, sir. And in spite of that fact, out of the ten missions since you have hit this base, you have only flown six. Hmm? Every time I have aborted, sir, I had a legitimate reason to. Gallagher, today you have made the worst enemy you will ever have in your life, me. Because as far as I am concerned, you are a disgrace to your country, to West Point, to the uniform I hate to share with you, to the 918th and to your father. And if I didn't need pilots so badly, so badly, I would court-martial you now. It would be easy for the general to transfer me out. Transfer you out? Oh, no, 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 no. And saddle some unsuspecting flight commander with a pilot who couldn't quite get his plane off the ground. No, Gallagher, no. You're going to stay right here. Or I can show you how much more I hate you than a Nazi because you're supposed to be on our side. Now, I am going to make you lay square eggs, Captain. I am going to make you regret the day you were born. All right, now I'm going to give you another airplane. And I want you, you personally, to paint this name on the side. The Leper Colony. And then I'm going to give you a hand-picked special crew, men who have shown a predisposition for head colds, for ear aches. I'm going to give you a co-pilot who is all thumbs, a navigator who can't find his own feet, a bombardier who can't hit his plate with his fork. Because I need these men, Captain. I need them badly. I need them in the air. And I can't stop a war in order to train them. So you're going to stand down from action for two weeks. You'll like that. And at the end of that time, Captain, you had better have yourself a crack combat unit. Because believe me, your life will hang on them. So we're the misfits. This is a shotgun wedding, and we're being forced to fly together in the same airplane. But let's get this one thing straight. We just have one thing in common, wanting to stay alive. So let's do our jobs to the best of our limited abilities. Hi, Captain. I'm sorry that I was late. What's your name? My name is Michaels. I'm your bombardier. 
I've had a cold, so I was on sick call and I have a cold, huh? Yes, sir. Well, Michaels, you'd fly today if you had pneumonia. All right, Kelly. Let's see if you can get us to the target area. Bordeaux. There is enough flak concentrated around that harbor to blow the whole 8th Air Force right out of the sky. That's why we're trying it with two aircraft instead of a squadron. With the element of surprise, you might make it. To what? A railway junction. Ammo pile up. One bomb in the right place can do the whole job. I'm to pick two top crews. Give them an impossible assignment, and then they are to be expendable. Now, isn't that a hard way to win a war, Wiley? Frank. Let's just allow that when the old man has cut a field order, he has thought it through. Now, there is not time to take each one apart and see what makes it tick. All right, what am I supposed to tell my other crew? They can kill you, but they can't eat you? Tell them anything. Other crew? That means you've already selected one. Joe Cobb screw with myself as pilot. Negative. I won't allow that, Frank. I go, Wiley. When do we do it? <sighs> that I don't know. I'll let you know as soon as I find out. All right. Oh, one more thing. I'm going to take the problem of Captain Gallagher off your hands. You sign the endorsement, Frank. I'll fix him over the desk job here in staff. Oh, wait a minute, Wiley. Gallagher's... <sighs> Gallagher's potentially a good man. He indicated that on the six missions he completed. It's the same with the rest of his crew. It's just that combat is... Well, facing death every day has turned them all into... Kind of a special challenge to command, Frank. <laughs> yeah, I suppose so. Yes. Now, look, we need every man over the target we can get. Well, Wiley, I have to pound each one of these men into shape. I have to push them past all normal limits. I've got to. I don't have any choice. days now, they've been at it from morning till night. I'd say Gallagher must really hate you, General. Yeah. Let's just hope he doesn't get over it too soon, Harvey. Right in the nose. How's that for the old bird dog? Well, that's real good. You keep that up, we're going to let you walk on across that field by yourself at night. Maybe you won't get lost as much. <laughs> hey, Sergeant. Now, number three here was waiting just great. You do the same thing with the rest of them, we'll make some real nice music. Hey, Gallagher! What do you say we go to the village and have a brew? You're not sharp enough with that checklist. And make sure that ground sheet checks out those flight controls. I don't want them sticking again like they did. It's too dangerous. Now, look, Blake. You may think you're kidding yourself into being some sort of a big, brave man, but you're not kidding me. All I want is a fighting chance to stay alive. And I'm not afraid to admit it, pal. <laughs> Maybe it's time to ease off a bit. Mm. If they're pressured, if they're, if they're squeezed hard enough, they're gonna go one way or the other, Harvey. It comes the right way. Captain Gallagher doesn't seem to be responding too well to the general's treatment. Yeah. 
Here you go. Want a drink, Captain? Scotch. <clears throat> Another scotch. Is it all right with the general if I buy my own? That's your purpose, Captain. You're looking better, Gallagher. You still got a long way to go, but you're looking better. A general is too kind. There's a scuttlebutt about that I earned something else. A spot on General Crow's staff. Is that just scuttlebutt, General, or did you uh, forget to mention it to me? No. It's true, Gallagher. I didn't tell you because you're doing a job here, and I wanted to see if you could handle it. Well, fine. As the general said, I'm doing a job. So the general has his answer. And I want my transfer. Well, I would like for you to give yourself some more time, Gallagher. General, I come from a military family. Now, that's taught me a few things. It's taught me how to lose two brothers before this war even gets warm yet. And it taught me to know what it's like to be the last shining hope in a military family. But, General, all I want is to come out of this thing alive. It just took me six missions of seeing my crew chopped to pieces to come face to face with that grim little reality. General Crow wants me, sir. I certainly want him. All right, I'll start your papers through tomorrow. Besides, the general won't miss me, I'm sure. The general requires a very special brand of savage tiger. I'm sure I don't belong in your zoo, General. We'll see about that, Gallagher. There's still some time. We're alerted tomorrow. As of now, you and your bunch are a combat crew. So I'll see you tomorrow in operations for briefing at 0500. Blake, did you have the ground chief check out the flight controls? Captain, when I got there, he wasn't around. He wasn't around. Don't you realize what can happen if they jam up again? Now, Blake, maybe you want to commit suicide, but I don't. All right, Captain, just calm down. I did you a big favor. This is the most legitimate excuse you've had in weeks to keep yourself on the ground. Well, we're going on this mission. If I have to fly this bird with two engines out. But I want to tell you guys something. If you think I was frightened to fly with you before, you should know how I feel now. Excuse me, Captain, but that's a red, red flare, and we got to start the engines.
Wow. Michaels, you're one lucky guy. A well, little flack ain't so bad. You guys got me there, that's what counts, right? <laughs> hey, Captain, haven't you got something to say to us? Yesterday, I ordered you to check out those flight controls. You didn't do it. Now, look, Captain, you didn't do it, and by your negligence, you almost killed ten men. Well, one more mistake like that, Blake, and you're up for a general court-martial. You guys think you're pretty good? Well, I'm gonna make you really good. I'm gonna make the leper colony the hottest thing on this base. If I have to break your backs doing it! missions during the daytime and keeping a check on your ground crew at night, that's kind of stretching it, isn't it? Thanks to the general, the leper colony inherited an inferior crew. I'm just trying to keep us alive, General. Gallagher. Well, look, you don't hate me. You never did. You hated the things inside yourself that didn't belong there. You thought you hated me because I brought them out in the open and showed them to you. After the last five missions, Captain, you don't have an inferior crew. You have a lot of reasons to be proud of yourself and your men. Now give yourself a chance. <laughs> How's that arm? Oh, it's just a scratch. It got worse than floating crap games. <laughs> you know, to tell you the truth, Captain, that's what's had me playing it so tight. You, you see, I, I've been a gambler most of my life. Nobody's been luckier at it. Since no man's luck runs good clean through, I figured up in the air was where mine was bound to run out. I guess it's not so bad up there after all. Well, you did good today, Kelly. As a matter of fact, all of you did. What do you say? Shall we uh, help the patient out? Yeah, come on. Come on. Oh, <laughs> 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 States? Yeah, sometimes I'd get in a couple of sessions with those cats. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really did. Sometimes we'd play out with that sweet jazz all through the night. I'll tell you, there's nothing like it. Listen to this. I got an idea. You know what we're going to do after this thing's over? What are we huh? going to do? The four of us, the big four, are going to get together and one time four. a year, and not only <laughs> peep pick, but we're going to celebrate, and you, my friend, are going to uh, bring the band. Hey, and old Michael's here is going to oil us all up with Oklahoma moonshine. And oh, our good no, captain's no. going to
gonna supply us with those fine chips. Hey, now wait a minute. Your good captain's not that good. You supply yourselves with your own fine oh. chicks. <laughs> good evening, gentlemen. According to the combat reports today, the um, leper colony managed to hit the target again. I, uh, I think you've improved enough to change the name of your airplane if you want to. Well, sir, uh, excuse us, but if it's all the same to you, we'd, all of us, would just soon leave the name leper colony the way it is. You all feel like that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, Gallagher, there's one more thing. Your transfer papers came through today, and uh, I'll sign the endorsement in the morning, if you haven't changed your mind. like you hit your inside street, General. Captain Gallagher's outside. Send him in. Send him in. Send him in. Uh, uh, come in. Come in. Come in. Come in. Uh, sit down, Captain. No, sir. This won't take very long. You're darn right. This won't take long. It'll take about as long as it takes to find your transfer papers, which ought to be right here. And tell them in two and we'll have a party. I wouldn't do that, General. I still want out. transferred out, as you call it. As of Saturday, you will be a member of General Crow's staff. Until that time, you will no longer fly for me. The next two days, you can spend in the sack. Doesn't make any difference now. Dismissed. Uh, no, sir, not yet. What do you mean, not yet, Captain? You got everything you wanted, didn't you, Gallagher? Not everything. General, the word is out about the two-plane lid for tomorrow. I want the leper colony on it. Because, General, when I leave here, I don't want just a good record. I want the very best to prove that's not the reason I want to get out of your command. Well, General, I've been honest about my motives. I hope you don't let that affect your decision. The only thing that will affect my decision about that strike tomorrow is the capability of the second crew. Frankly, Gallagher, I'm not sure you or your men are up to it. We've worked hard, and we deserve that mission. And I'm officially volunteering for it. Are you volunteering for yourself, Gallagher? Or for yourself and your crew? My crew will be for it. I'll have to think about it. Mesh one. Able leader to Able and Baker crews. I'd like to give you some fog, but it's CAVU with only three tenths of cloud cover all the way. Let's stay together. Good luck. Navigator, have we made up our time yet? 
Yes, sir. Should be in our IP in three minutes and ten seconds. I don't know what those fighters are. So far, I guess we're just lucky. Make that past tense. FW, 10 o'clock. Watch it, Pete. Buddy, you're confirmed, whoever you are. to crew. I just hang together. Everything will be all right. We're going to make this. We're in control. No sweat. This is Gallica. Let's turn back. You're not going to make it. Flag, that'll be our IP. Fighters are pulling off. Save your guns. They'll be waiting for us when we come out. Pilot's a bombardier. All right, Michaels. It, it's all yours. Please make it good. Please make it good. Bombardiers, that's right in the bucket. Great shooting, guys. Gallagher, what's the matter? Baker crew, what's happening over there? We took some 20s in the cockpit. Blake's unconscious and Gallagher's about out from the loss of blood. Hey, Belita. I'm, I'm all right. No sweat. A gang of bandits, Skipper, 12 o'clock high. Waste gunner to Able Leader. Spitfire's coming out to meet us. Ain't they a beautiful sight? 190s are leaving. Gallagher, how bad is it over there? To Able Leader. One and three engines out. Losing altitude. We can make it, if the ship can. If it gets too rough, bail out. It can't. Blake's still unconscious. He can't make it. We're taking him home. Okay, Joe, give it a try. That's the English coast dead ahead. Ca Captain? I hope you 
hope you can get the old colony up a little higher than this because them cliffs are full of rocks. Make it, make it. Just a minute, General. I don't understand. Why the switch? What makes me eligible for my own command all of a sudden? I'm the same guy. No. No, you're not the same guy, Joe. Out there over that channel, Joe, you, uh, you became a mother. You acquired nine of the raunchiest, least disciplined retreads ever to win an official commendation from Wing. A commendation? Yeah. Major Stowell is going to be awfully upset with you, refusing that transfer after all the trouble he went to. But I'll, uh, I'll try to make him understand. Here, take it. Come on, get me over here. I want to see if it has... Yeah, it has real tension. One, two, three, four. Have you men forgotten how to salute? Now, just because you flew one good mission, don't expect any special privileges around here. Now that you're a lead crew, I expect a great deal more out of you. And you, Major Gallagher. If you think you had it rough before, you wait. You just wait until you've got a full squadron to worry about. You'll see how rough it gets. Now, I expect the best out of you men, the very best. Is that clear? Yes, sir. <laughs> 